Now we're bringing this on ourselves. So taxation, our taxes are too high and we take far too much tax off people and we expect the state to do everything. That's why we keep taking tax off people. Now, I, I recommend people read a book by George Orwell, uh, Voter Wiganby. Yeah. Poverty in the North was horrendous 100 years ago. Mm. Absolutely horrendous. That would have been my life 100 years ago. And when you read how people live, it's like, God, we need a welfare state. We need to make sure a bit of bad luck or an injury doesn't mean you hit rock bottom and you can never get out of rock bottom ever again. We need to avoid that, which we did with a welfare state. So I'm, I'm, I want a welfare state. But our welfare state now has expanded and does things it was never meant to do. Welfare state was, was always about a safety net. It's now a hammock. You can quite comfortably lie in your welfare state now for all your life and you will have a very decent quality of life. And I've got loads of examples of how that's true. And then the welfare state started doing something it shouldn't have done, which was handouts. The welfare state should be a hand up service. Mm. You fall in the hard times, that's fine. Here's some help. You need to do these things to get yourself back up. But we're going to support you doing those things. It now says, oh, you've, you've fallen in hard times. Stay there. Here's some money. Don't cause us any problems. That's what unemployment benefit basically is now, all these benefits. It's about telling people, don't complain, because we're going to do nothing about your complaints. Here's some money, shut up, mm. because your problems are too hard for us to tackle. You're, um, you know, disabled, you know, you, you can't, you know, you're uneducated, you can't find a job. I don't care what your problem is, we just want you to go away. We'll pay you to shut up. Mm. That's a problem off our checklist now. But that's costing us billions and billions of pounds. Mm. Not only that, we're, we're, we're ensuring those people don't reach their potential and don't have the quality of life they should have. Now, that, some risk now, we talk about risk as if it's a bad thing. Risk in itself isn't a bad thing. Risk leads to success. It can lead to failure. Yeah. But failure isn't just failure. Failure is a way of learning what not to do next time. Yeah. And you take that lesson and you take another risk and you might hit success next time. So we need people to take more risk, but we keep turning to national government and councils going, you need to look after me. Mm. We got to a stage where on benefits, we weren't giving people their rent money. We were paying their rent directly for them. And I understand why, because we didn't trust them not to spend on alcohol and drugs. Yeah. But how do you expect that person ever to develop that responsibility to go get a job when we don't even trust them to pay their own rent with the mm. money the government's given them. So then we changed that. We started giving people all their benefits in one go, saying that you need to pay your rent, you need to pay your council tax. And the vast majority of people caught with it and did it, but we're preparing them for a working life. And instead of giving people benefits every fortnight, we started giving people benefits every month. Because when you get a job, you get your money monthly. And you need to know how to budget for that whole month while you're on benefits. So when you get a job, you're in that habit of budgeting for a month and we're not setting them up for failure. Yeah. And if we keep relying on the state to solve our problems, nothing's ever, ever going to improve. We used to have a welfare state before our welfare state. It was called family. Mm. And the best thing about family is they would hold you accountable. So you become an employer. Do not come down there two days a week and, I know I'm, and we'll feed you and the kids and stuff like that while you're looking for work. And they would hold you accountable. If you didn't do and you weren't doing what they wanted you to do to get a job, well, they stopped their welfare for you because, no, we're not helping you anymore, like you're not helping yourself. And your family would do those things because they loved you. Mm. And your family want the best for you because they love you. And sometimes it's tough love. The state never loves you. The state never wants, the state's never trying to do the best thing for you. The state is always trying to do the best thing for politicians. You're just a number to the state. So we started removing responsibility of families and giving it more and more to the state to look after us. And that's a huge problem. And all this costs money. And politicians have got into the habit of every time you have a problem now, rather than fixing it, throw money at it. Do you know why? It's not my money. My pension's sorted. And like Rishi Sunak, I'm going to America when I'm not Prime Minister anymore. Mm. I'm not living here. Yeah, yeah. You know, his grandparents were born in India. They moved to Africa. His parents were born in Africa. They moved to the UK. He was born in the UK and he intends to go to America. His family have no connections anywhere. Yeah. They will just go to the next best place for them. Yeah. 
And I'm not, I'm not criticising them. To no, I mean, that's them. not to be criticised. No. That's their choice. Yeah. I think it's the wrong choice to have. Yeah. But we've got a Prime Minister who has no intentions of staying in this country. Mm -hmm. He's the Prime Minister. Yeah. And Although he, he wasn't voted in, was he? So he was voted as, a, as he was vote, No one's ever voted in as prime minister yeah. because you vote for your local MPs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, but through the system we've got, he became prime minister. Um, but throwing money at problems all the time. You know, we're, we're still donating zero point five percent of our gross national product to um, foreign aid. Mm. Half a percent a year. Yeah. It used to be point seven. It's now point five. I believe. Yeah. All that should go. We're giving money to an unwinnable war in Ukraine. Yeah. Rishi Sunak announced a couple of months ago the hundreds of millions is giving to foreign countries to help them reduce their net zero. It's like, how, <laughs> how much money can you give out? And then you talk about seven million a day in hotel bills for elite, for criminals who break into the country. Correct. We have yeah. a law on the statute yeah. books yeah. for people who enter the country illegally. It's, it's, it's an offence. Yeah. They're, they're criminals and we put them up in hotels yeah. and it's like and the reason why we do all this and the reason why you're paying far too much tax is because that's how we solve problems in our country now just throw money at it. we just throw money at it because no one's got the backbone the intelligence or the balls to take on the problem and fix it for good yeah because that takes hard work and dedication and how much of that money we're paying that tax the man in Wolverhampton, how much of that is going to him to help him? Hardly, his life? hardly anything. I think that's right. I don't think I think I'll be right. And that's the scary why. bit is the tax we're paying isn't even all the money we're spending. We're still borrowing money every year. Yes. Because what yeah. we're taking off everybody else still isn't enough to pay for the crap we're spending it on. Yeah. So we're going in more and more and more debt yeah. that our grandchildren will have to pay back. And and just talking about money and spending money and allocating money. One of the big issues now that we see on a daily basis, bombarded with on a daily basis, is climate change, mm. CO2, electric cars, um, and we are spending billions mm. on that as well, subsidising mm. that, pumping money into something that, you know, in, in my view is, rather than let it take its natural course, and I think there is a place for electric cars and and all that sort of thing. Yeah. But we as a country contribute, of the actual man-made CO2, we contribute less than 1% mm -hmm. of that. And that 1% is 1% of a far bigger percentage of total yeah. CO2. So, so why are we doing that? Why are we trying to lead the way there? We were the, we were the only country for a while to say that we were going to be net zero mm -hmm. by, was it 2050? I, I don't it's know. Like that, yeah. yeah uh, uh, and we and then we've actually changed that now so we're going to go all electric by 2030 now it's 2035 so there's another five years yeah and that'll get pushed back and pushed yeah. back but why are we doing that we don't have leaders we have middle managers and middle managers get told by their chief execs what you're pushing and our chief execs are the eu wef and the un we're always our middle manager always being told by their chief execs what you're pushing yeah yeah so they're these super elites are saying this is the way to go our middle managers are saying we're going to try and comply with that yep. i mean why don't why don't we just say we're not coming to cop 26 or whatever it is That's we're actually we're actually going to use the money that yep. we have here to spend on our people yep. to make sure they have good have good lives that's what a leader would do yes a middle manager is always looking up for direction yeah a leader looks down yeah. What's good for the people below here. Yeah. And middle manager always looks up about what to be told what to do next. 